Hey everyone, welcome back to Wise Guys Garage. In today's video, we're going to be working again on my 1994 Ford F-350. If you haven't seen my most recent video, I just purchased this truck pretty recently. And one of the problems that was present when I did purchase the vehicle was the fact that the instrument cluster did not operate correctly. Now, over time, there's a little plastic layer that peels on the top of the LCD and the LCD no longer functions accordingly. And the repair process is actually a lot simpler than you and I would think. So I'm going to be your tour guide here and show you guys how you can actually fix this problem for dirt cheap. Now the first thing I want to do is walk you guys through and how you can actually check to see if this will repair your instrument cluster before you go through all the effort in taking the instrument cluster out of your truck and doing the full on tear down and putting it back in. If you have a set of polarized glasses, go ahead and put those on and see if you can read the numbers on your LCD display. If you happen to see the LCD display and it's very faint, Try rotating it 90 degrees by taking the glasses off and rotating it clockwise 90 degrees and see if you're able to visibly see the numbers on the display. And if you can't see it at that point, unfortunately, you can go ahead and pass on this video because this repair will not work in your case. That means the actual LCD itself is far more damaged than replacing the layer that makes the numbers visible. But if you do happen to see the numbers, even if they're ever so faint, you can go ahead and proceed in the repair process. Okay, so the obvious first step is to get the cluster out of the truck. And I already have my bezel removed because I got to do some repairs and so is the roof liner and a couple other things. I'll show that in a later video. But the first thing we're going to do is get this guy out of here. Now, I'm missing a lot of things on my truck, like the park ball sensor. So what you're going to want to do is pull this guy out real quick. Just a couple plugs on the back, should be three of them. And last but not least, you're gonna to need to get this cable off, which is just a little nut that you spin that's located on the side right there. And that's what the shift indicator is located on. It tells it what's it's in park and whatnot like that. And now that we got the cluster out, we're gonna go inside and take a look on how to restore it. So the next thing you should be left with is one of these, the instrument cluster itself. Now here is the before, because I haven't done this one yet, and this is the one we're going to do on camera. This is the after. You see how clear the actual lens is in comparison between the two? You have the one that I haven't cleaned yet, and then the one that I cleaned, and then I also fixed the LCD display that is located right there as well. Now over time, the little lens that's on the display fails and peels and leaves a terrible contrast layer that is left on the LCD and essentially renders it unreadable. And we're gonna be fixing that, not on this one, but on this other instrument cluster that I have located right here. Now, a close-up view on it, that little bezel or LED display or LCD display, whatever the technical term of it is, has what they call a polarization layer on it. And the polarization layer, I'm sure the OBS guys are very familiar with what this looks like, eventually ends up looking like this little piece of plastic film right here. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get yourself a beautiful iFixit kit. I have this one, I've had it for a few years now. I absolutely love it. It was the best $79 I have ever spent on a tool kit. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to grab is this tip right here. This one is labeled 5.5. I'm guessing that's the size of the socket that it is. Push that to the side there, and we're gonna peel off all of these external bolts to get access on the inside. You can also use the Torx bits that's in there, but if there's a socket tip on it, I'm always gonna use the socket either way. Because I hate Torx bits. I don't know what it is. They always seem to strip on me. I can use the perfect size tip on it. Does not matter. They hate my guts. Pull these bolts out of the way. They shouldn't be too tight to take out. Okay, that clears a clear glass or plastic, whatever you want to call. Pull this off right here. Okay, that should be all the bolts. Then you got this black bezel right here that comes off. 
set that to the side because we're not interested in it in a, at the moment. Then we're going to take these two off. This is going to be present on not only the automatic but the manual transmission cars as well. I'm pretty sure it's just a black, uh, you know, face cover that fills in that little void right there. Set those bolts to the side. They're the only ones that are slightly different. Now you're going to have two different color bolts here. Not exactly sure why. Maybe Ford just felt like doing that on a random Tuesday. One is like uh, yellow zinc coated. The other one's like a black oxide looking finish. Does not matter. They have the same thread pitch. Now for the shift indicator, those are the ones that are slightly different. It's a little bit more coarse of a thread like this, but uh, it's pretty hard to mix up because they are slightly shorter than the other three. The next thing you're going to want to do is get your pry bar out of your kit. I like to use the little blue ones that come in the iFixit kits like this one right here. Spin that up and we're just going to pop these covers off. Now if this has never been done before it's going to be tight. You could give it a decent amount of force before something like this breaks. They are pretty stout and durable but you know fire beware kind of thing. You want to make sure that you don't break this. Now these things will likely delaminate over time like this one is starting to do right here. What you could do is to get some spray adhesive or some glue. Don't use super glue because when it oxidizes it leaves a white finish and just stick a little bit in there with the q-tip and you now glue back down i'm not too worried about that because it still seems to be staying in place pretty well so we're not going to touch that one at the moment and then we're going to get this one on the side right here as well pop that out easy peasy you know all looks good perfect and then the last but not least the one we're most curious and interested in is this guy right here this is your PSOM is what they call it in Ford's term and your speedo this keeps your mileage on the motherboard not stored in the ECU well, let's not break it down and essentially what this does is if your car predates OBD2 this in conjunction with the ECU sets the shift points by the calculations that are completed on this by reading the tire speed via the vehicle speed sensor and the rear differential. Now the problem is this display delaminates like this one did and it leaves the polarization layer affected. Now what I found online is these sheets right here, I will leave an Amazon link in the video description, that restore the polarization layer on these. Now let me peel this out of the bag real quick. And this is two layers of them. You can kind of see in the camera how the lens changes on there. It's pretty crazy, right? You can show that up top. See? You get a little bit more contrast on the display. This one has some of the adhesive film still stuck on there, but we're going to do our best to get that off. And I like to use a little goo gun with some Q-tips, but we'll get to that in just a second. So I'll leave a link in the video description on the ones I bought. These are self-adhesive, so it makes it even easier for you. So you literally just have to peel it off, clean it, stick these on, and that LCD should work and look beautiful again. Now, this won't fix the actual display if it's broken. Keep that in mind. So if your display is shot itself and you're not seeing anything on it at all, it's likely the LCD itself. So we're going to want to take these little gold Torx bits bolts out. One's located right there and then one's located right there. And once you have both removed, we're going to pop this little plastic thing out. Take the cable, set it like that, and then remove the back half of this. Pull it past the little, you know, isolating tabs that hold it in place or align it <clears throat> and this guy should just pop right out and there we go we have the part that we're going to be fixing in this video out now now this LCD is definitely seeing better days I'm seeing scratch and cracks marks right there that's likely not on the glass itself but more or less what's left on the polarization layer and the glue and what I like to do is get a little goo gone and remove this. If you have the 3M adhesive remover, 
That is the absolute best stuff that you can get for this. I'm telling you, it is amazing. It will remove any of this stuff 10 times faster than with the Goo Gone. So I'm gonna step out of the camera real quick, grab some Goo Gone and Q-tips, and I'll be right back. And we are back. Got my Q-tips and some Goo Gone. And another thing I'll probably try is a razor blade. This is just some standard razor blade you can buy at any store, pretty much. Take some Goo Gone, I poked a little hole in it with a, uh, a needle. Soak it on in there until it starts to turn a little orange like the color of this. And I already peeled that layer off, that's this one right here. But you're probably going to have something like this, just go ahead and peel it off, it doesn't matter what you use. Take this and we're going to be cleaning this out the best we can. And this might take some time and it will make some funny noises. But you have to get this as clean as possible. Now the reason why I grabbed the razor is sometimes the adhesive film is a pain in the butt to get removed. And what I'm doing here is scoring it a little bit to allow the Goo Gone to get in there. Now you have to be super careful with this. Please avoid the ribbon cable at all costs. Do not even get close to it with the razor blade. All right, so I got the LCD as clean as I can get it. I got all the original adhesive crap off. That's all this plastic right here. And I scraped it off with a razor. You should be okay with doing that because this is glass and you don't have to worry about scratching the glass itself. But you can kind of see that on the inside there, the LCD itself is starting to delaminate, not the actual uh, polarization layer. So this LCD might not give the best contrast, but it still should function a heck of a lot better than it did before. So now that we got it all nice and clean, it's time to pull out the polarization layer and cut a nice new piece for this. But before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to take some isopropyl alcohol and clean the surface of this guy to make sure none of the goo gone that we got there is gonna be left on this. So there's a few other things I wanna mention that I can discuss while I'm sitting here cutting out the polarization layer itself. There's a crucial thing that you want to do before you go and start cutting this sheet out. You want to make sure that you have the orientation properly installed for the LCD display. I can't accurately state which orientation you need because it is highly plausible that the direction that yours is might be different from mine and you might need to cut it in a different way. But the process to check the angle on what you need to cut this sheet is found and discovered extremely easy. All you need to do is bring the speedometer into the cab, put the key in the on position, plug in just the speedometer, and then see which way with the sheet of polarization layer in front of the LCD display, you actually read the numbers. If you can't see the numbers, that is not the way you need to cut it. Once you find the way you need to cut it, bring the thing back into the house or wherever you're cutting out the sheet, and then you can cut out the piece and size that you need and stick it on the display accordingly. So after that's all said and done, you're pretty much all set with the LCD side of things, and it's really, really simple to do. The only other thing left is to restore the plastic lens that you see through in order to read your gauges. Now that part of the video we can see in just a second. Okay, so here is the kitchen sink I'm going to be throwing at this thing. I'm gonna start with the most aggressive compound, Ultra Pro Cut Speed. Ultra Pre Speed Pro, Ultra whatever compound right here. This stuff is the most aggressive following the Meguiar's Ultimate Compound right here. Then we're gonna hit it with the Turtle Wax Restore. This is gonna remove any further oxidation. And then finally some Plasti X right there. So I'm gonna use this on a drill, which I got right here, and this buffing wheel, and we're gonna get that all nice and clean again. You don't need much, it's only a little bit of a surface. 
And we're gonna, I like to spread it out on the plastics like this. You can just use your hand, it's not a big deal. If you guys weren't aware, paint on cars is mostly plastic based and that's why this stuff works very well on plastics as well. Like headlight lenses too, so don't ever think you need any special compound for anything plastic. Now you got that on there, don't have to worry about putting it on the pad. Again, this is more than enough compound for this stuff. And then we're gonna just hit it with this and then we'll follow it up with the other compound. Okay, set that aside, give it a quick wipe like that, and it's already looking a million times better, but we are going to keep going, because I promise you we can make this thing look absolutely brand new again. Next step, we're going to use the ultimate compound, it's a little bit less aggressive, if I can get some out, I must have left it open once, yep, too much. Okay, set that back aside. We're all done with that. And then I got to use the green bottle. This will remove any final oxidation left on the plastic. That's more than enough, right there. Spread that one out as well, like so. Go ahead and hit it again with the buffing wheel. And for our final step, a little bit of Plasti-X. This will leave like a little protective layer, but we're still gonna ceramic coat this afterwards to give it that actual, absolutely beautiful sheen on it. So, there we go. All right, well now that the lens is all polished up, the only thing left really was to reinstall everything, put all the bolts back together, and reassemble it back to the dash of the truck. And as you can see, the LCD display and everything is all working as it should, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now I'm gonna adjust the camera lighting so it looks like you can see how I'm seeing it, and it looks absolutely beautiful. Even when you zoom in on the LCD display, there's plenty of contrast there. The numbers are nice and crisp, and it looks as it should. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I really appreciate you all for tuning in. Make sure you like, hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in next week's video. Take care.